Australia are not just known for producing really crap TV shows like Neighbours and Home and Away. They're also known for producing this awesome rifle. This is Terminus Tactical and this is the Lifco Arms F90 from KWA Training. Hi and welcome to Terminus Tactical. Today, we're gonna to be taking a look at this bad boy. This is the Lifco Arms F90 from KWA Training. So when you first get to hold one of these things, you'll completely understand why that when I first opened the box, I shrieked with excitement, <gasps> spent 10 minutes caressing it, and got a semi-hard on. So the Lifco Arms F90 is an enhanced model of the F88. And the original F88 is a licensed copy of the Austrian Steyr Org. Austria, Australia, Austria, Australia. Okay, look, I can understand where some of you might be getting confused, but it's really not rocket science. <laughs> now, internally and externally, the real steel F90 is still extremely close to the Steyr Org, but yet has many distinctive upgrades and changes. The F90 is said to be more comfortable, more durable, and more reliable than the F88 and the original Steyr Org. So where do KWA fit into all this? Well, KWA has advanced the development of Airsoft as a non-lethal training alternative for military and law enforcement agencies throughout the world. So it's of my understanding that KWA training produce a version of this gas blowback rifle for the Australian Department of Defense. So now let's take a closer look at the markings and features of KWA Training's F90. So as far as logos and brandings go, on the right side of the stock, she has the Lifco Arms logo right here. Wow. If we pull across to the barrel, you'll find the serial number located just here. If we flip the gun around to the left-hand side, it is branded as being made in Taiwan. <laughs> So just like the real steel F90, this bad boy has a complete lower polymer housing. So as you can see, she has the Steyr Org Waffle Magazine. Right above the magazine, you have the ejection port. Now for some reason, the KWA's version does not have the brass deflector shield. Not that that matters because as a training rifle or for airsoft, you're not going to have any brass flying out of your ejector port. So just down from the ejection port, you have your cross block takedown button. Moving along from there, you have your cross block safety switch. Now there's no selector switch on the F90. This is because it has a two stage trigger. A gentle squeeze of the trigger will give you semi-automatic while a full squeeze will give you full auto. So the two stage trigger does have a semi-automatic trigger lock right here. Moving up from the trigger on the right hand side, you have your accessory pick rail here. Then above that, you have your longer pick rail for your chosen optics. Below that, you'll notice, unlike the Steyr Org, there's no folding grip. This is because they've chosen to give you your own accessory rail, so you can choose your preferred grip instead. Moving along from the rails, you then have your gas plug and gas plug lever. And then up from there, you've got this absolutely beautiful fluted barrel with bayonet connection and, of course, your flash hider. So moving on to the left-hand side, you have your front sling swivel right here. Just behind that, you have your charging handle with a forward assist button. Moving across from the charging handle, once again, we're back to your two-stage trigger, your cross-block safety, your cross-block takedown button, and now we come to your bolt release button. And of course, back from that, you've got your rear sling swivel. So as we were coming across the rifle, you would have noticed these cooling holes right here. And of course, these skeleton cutout holes just here underneath the rail. So when you get your F90, you'll notice just here that there's a trigger guard insert, which pops out like so. It's of my understanding that this comes out so you can snugly fit in your under barrel grenade launcher. So several years ago, I was given the opportunity to hold, admire, get wet over and field strip a real steel F90. I took lessons. So now let's see how much of that I can actually remember and how much has actually transitioned over from the real steel Lifto Arms model to KWA Training's version of this F90. So first of all, remove the magazine. Make sure the chamber's clear. Fire off in a safe direction. Now you're going to pull the charging handle back and lock it into place here. Now push in your cross block takedown button from the left so it protrudes fully to the right hand side. As you just saw, 
the upper quickly come three of the lower. You can now remove your bolt. Now the rest of this does break down with the use of all these Allen and hex keys here. The other thing I need to remind you is that if you do not have the charging handle pulled back when you disassemble, you won't be able to remove the trigger pack from the back here that I'm about to show you now. So we're going to the rear of the polymer housing. You have this lovely textured butt plate right here. Right in the center here is a button. Push, don't pull, the thing swivel inwards. You'll hear a small click and your butt pad will come away like so. Over to the trigger pack at the back. Pull across your sling swivel once. Press the button on the trigger pack and your sling swivel will come out like so. There's your trigger pack. So now let's piece this bad boy back together so we can get outside and give it a test on the mini range. So before we head on out to the mini range, as promised, I'm going to quickly show you how to access the hot wheel without fully taking apart the upper from the lower. So you're simply gonna push your cross block takedown switch across like so. Pull the upper forward by about two inches. And your hot wheel is right here. Push the upper back across like so. And, and, and Bob's your aunt. Fanny's your aunt. Job done. Someone recently asked me why I have prime bottles dotted all over my mini range. There's a simple answer for this. KSI has caused me extreme financial strain because my kids constantly want me to buy them prime. So I figured I'd get a little bit more out of my money and I would shoot these on the mini range. Now on the subject of prime and financial strain, I think we'll use KSI as our target out on the range today. So we're out on the mini range, I'm gonna use these Rebel Precision Grade 0.20 gram BBs. I have a standard red dot sight on the F90 dialed in. We're gonna fire five or six shots into the small Remington target here, and then we're gonna mad dump the rest into KSI. It's around eight to 10 degrees outside, which as you know, will have quite a significant impact on a gas rifle. You probably noticed she was venting quite heavily, which is pretty normal for that kind of temperature. However, considering I hadn't fully dialed her in or zeroed the sights properly, that's pretty impressive grouping at eight to 10 meters. And I have no complaints on the full auto. What is wrong with them? So in good old Jerry Springer fashion, I'm now gonna give you my final thoughts on KWA Training's F90. I've never been a big fan of ballpup rifles since having to work with the SA80, but I have to say the F90 is fucking glorious. I'm in love. You tend to find with ballpups that because most of the internal action happens behind the trigger, like Nicki Minaj, they tend to be extremely rear heavy. However, that's not the case with the F90. I can pretty much balance her halfway up the polymer housing with my one finger. Wow. Now the real steel version has a modular barrel system. If KWA training incorporate that into their airsoft model, I'll be all over it just like a cheap hooker. Me so horny. I'd like to say a big thank you to Titan Forge Airsoft who supplied us with this F90 for this video. Don't forget to head on over to their website and use the discount code Terminus5. Don't forget to click that subscribe button and like and share my content. See you on the next episode of Terminus Tactical.